Good day everyone, I am Frederick Salimi, Director of PMC of Pro. This e-course will be uploaded in a training workspace of EPC365. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, send us an email given in description. Have a good day and talk to you later. A brief description about my qualification and experience. Uh, I have a master's degree in dependability, which covers safety, reliability, maintainability, and availability. I also have a BS degree in process control and instrumentation. I worked several years with engineering companies like Technib and operators like Total. I was involved in pre-project, uh, feed, detail design, construction, and operation. Today we will discuss about uh, seal determination or verification. This is a generic version and will be customized later. This course uh, takes one day and uh, you will have access to one year to EPC 365 training monitor for discussion. And the objective of this course is to give a practical understanding of seal determination or verification for oil and gas installation. So what is objective of uh, uh, seal verification? The purpose of seal verification study is to verify seal capability regarding integrity capability a seal a following seal allocation phase. You remember that I said that's about seal allocation. We define uh, which uh, seal should be each loop should have. And then now we have to verify them uh, by seal verification. So seal rated with a seal one or higher will be verified based on probability of failure of demand calculation. The objective of seal verification or compliance uh, a study is to demonstrate that identified SIFs will achieve the required seal either due to seal assessment or standards. The seal study will contain a, a seal analysis detailing all finding result including a data dossier with relevant failure data, reliability block diagram for each SIF, Reliability calculation for probability of failure on demand and requirement of the SIF in terms of system architecture and probability of failure on demand. Probability of failure of demand will be verified according to IEC 61508 second edition and IEC 61511 and company specification. So here I explain about what is the approach. We have uh, a detector subsystem, we have a logic subsystem, and we have final element subsystem. So very probability of failure of demand are based on the following assumption. Component failure rate are constant over life of the system. Global structure of the sieve is described in the following. Detectors input subsystem, this one, uh, comprise, comprise, uh, comprises the actual sensor or any other components and wiring, but not include the component where the signal are first combined by voting or other processing. Logic subsystem include a component where signal are first combined and other uh, components where final signal are presented to the final element subsystem. And uh, finally, final element subsystem include all final actuating components and wiring which uh, process the final signal from logic subsystem. So based on maintenance and test policies, several pay, uh, points are assumed for uh, probability of failure of demand calculation. So probability of failure of demand calculation, you know, here, for example, we see seal one, 
probability of error of demand based uh, on uh, on uh, IEC is one over uh, risk reduction factor. It is one over ten to one, one uh, over one hundred. This is for seal one, and risk reduction uh, factor is between ten and one hundred, and this availability is one minus probability of error of demand average. For example, here about availability, if you write it in performance standards, about availability of uh, this. Uh, uh, this loop it should be for example 99 percent and this is uh, IEC 61508 and 61511 table for low demand SIF it is for low demand so SIF reliability and availability calculation uh, should be modeled as follows failure rate during operation or on a standby, failure rate during the test, repair rate, test period, date of first test, probability of failure due to a, a start in the test, duration of the test, uh, component availability during the test, test uh, cover rate and probability of uh, forgetting to reconfigure, reconfigure after the test or, or repairing. So data collection should be from company database or OREDA as well as vendor and uh, integrated data and uh, parameters of common cause failure should be defined according to IEC 61508. So seal analysis will include the following results. We have to have average uh, probability of failure of demand uh, used to verify compliance with SEAL for the whole SIF. This is if we have a SEAL assignment, we look at the average uh, probability of failure demand. You should have also a percentage of the time that probability of failure of uh, at a time T uh, is spent in each area defined in four possible level of SEAL and maximum probability of failure of demand uh, for the whole SIF and sensibility, uh, sensitivity analysis according to input parameters including parameter of a common cause failure if required. So this is the probability of failure of demand and this is uh, with the years. So here actuator, sensor and solver with different uh, color. For example, this is uh, actuators, uh, solver, and, and, and final, uh, final element. And this is the overall. So here by years, the probability of failure demand increase. And then after the test decrease, and that is, uh, this should be showing seal one, seal two. And here we see the overall percentage of seal one, uh, seal two, and seal three. So the, the analysis, there are certain packages that they do this, uh, Exidia and uh, Grief and other softwares, they will do this. So the report shall cover like this. This come from SIL uh, allocation. This is the function name, initiator and final element here. So here is seal 2 and then by seal verification we have to see uh, do we achieve seal 2 or not. That, that shows the compliance for example this one is seal 1 but our system goes to seal 2. So the result should be a page like this for each SIF. So here the input logic solver actuate a uh, final element. Here the average uh, uh, probability of failure demand, other things, and here the contribution to the uh, to the sieve. Uh, I will show you uh, in detail each of each of one in next style slide. So here, if you see here, uh, this is, these are the sensor device. Here is in 12 it was assumed that 12 months. It is one out of one. 
and the overall is two out of three. It goes uh, to TriConnect Seal 2 Logic Solver, and then two out of two, and this goes to the final element, and each one, uh, this is the uh, remote actuator valve, and then one, of, one out of one, and this is 12 months. And uh, remember that the, in the uh, period of the test for performance standard, we take these 12, 12 months as, as a basis for the, uh, because this is the PSLL, it is uh, one of the components of hydrocarbon containment, and it is uh, safety critical. So, and because it is safety critical, the period of a test should be, uh, could we have a minimum requirement for uh, a test period, and, and we can see it from here. So it goes to the uh, performance standards. So here, we this is a C1. Uh, the uh, description is PSLL, this number two out of three, downstream, and what it gives, it gives the initiation of the shutdown level two, which closes SSV1 and ESD. So this is the, uh, and the mission time is 15 years. So the calculation with the software that we have, it shows the target seal will be two, target RFF is 100, achieve seal here, it achieves seal two, a probability of failure of demand average is uh, 6.16 10 to minus 3 or minus 3. Seal uh, probability of failure of demand average is 2, uh, which, which will comply with this. And then uh, achieve RAFF is 178, uh, which is for seal 2. And mean time between failures is uh, 6.9. And here we can see the for the sensor logic software and final element and probability of failure of demand in average uh, mean time between failure and seal uh, how, how it is. And then and here it shows for example the configuration of this for example the sensor is very little. Uh, contribution mainly yellow is logic and the final element and if we want to improve the system we have to look at this and get a decision about for example uh, improving the uh, sensor final element etc so uh, this uh, uh, e-course will be uploaded in seal in risk engineering training you, the company for the customized training company put all the information about the seal here and then we create an e-course for the approval and when it is approved we put it as a discussion here and for one year you have access to give the, uh, the uh, your questions and then uh, we will answer to your question. Now I put a CSP video in my uh, in seal uh, allocation e-course. I said that here, uh, list uh, seal allocation shows uh, that level alarm high high. Here, in order not to have the uh, problem, it should be seal three as a minimum. So if it is seal three, I would like that uh, you see with the, what we said, sh what the sensor should be. Do do we should should we have a sensor two out of three? Should we have the logic solver seal three? And should we have the uh, the in a, the final element, which is initiation of the unit shutdown, uh, should be seal three? So now you think about that, and we will discuss about it in our workshop. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. If you have any question, please send at pmc at epc365.com. We have two websites. One is in French, one is in uh, English. There is a request form. You can send us an email, and then we will answer to you as soon as possible. Have a good day, and talk to you in our next workshop. The hot feed entering the tower caused the liquid inside to start to boil and swell liquid filled the tower completely and began spilling into the overhead vapor line, exerting great pressure on the emergency relief valves 150 feet below. At 1.14 p.m., the three emergency valves opened, 
sending nearly 52,000 gallons of flammable liquid to the blowdown drum at the other end of the ISOM unit. Liquid rose inside the blowdown drum and overflowed into a process sewer, setting off alarms in the control room. But the high-level alarm on the blowdown drum failed to go off. None of the operators knew of the catastrophe unfolding in the ISOM unit. As flammable hydrocarbons overfilled the blowdown drum, operators nearby saw a geyser of liquid and vapor erupt from the top of the stack. The equivalent of nearly a tanker truck full of hot gasoline fell to the ground and began forming a huge flammable vapor cloud. The vapor cloud expanded in just 90 seconds, engulfing the unit and the nearby trailers full of workers. About 25 feet from the base of the blowdown drum, two workers were parked in a pickup truck with the engine idling. As flammable vapor entered the air intake, the diesel engine began to race. The two workers fled, unable to shut off the engine. Moments later, witnesses saw the truck backfire and ignite the vapor cloud. Powerful explosions swept through the area. The blast pressure wave accelerated through the ISOM unit, causing heavy destruction and igniting fires. The workers inside the trailers were right in the path of the explosions. The fires continued to burn for hours. Twelve of the 20 occupants of the double-wide trailer were killed, along with three workers in a trailer nearby. 180 workers were injured, many with serious burns, fractures, or other traumatic injuries. The wood and metal frame trailers were blown apart by the blasts. Firefighters struggled to rescue the injured and recover the victims. 50 large chemical storage tanks were damaged, and the ISOM unit remained shut down for more than two years.